This is Real News Media TV, coverage you can trust. Please like, share, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Select all for daily news updates. Good morning, my Real News Media TV family. Thank you so much for tuning in this morning, and I'm wishing for everyone a wonderful and a productive day. And in the news this morning for April 29, 2023, Inmate escapes a correctional center in St. Catherine. A search is now underway for an inmate who escaped from the Tamarind Farm Adult Correctional Center in St. Catherine on Friday. An officer at the institution reported that, at about 2.25 p.m., the prisoner, Jermaine Jackson, escaped from a group of 22 inmates who were working on the farm. Jackson was serving a sentence of one year for assault at the common law and the seven years at hard labor for illegal possession of a firearm. The Department of Correctional Services is collaborating with the Jamaica Constabulary Force to find the escapee. Alleged the drug trafficker remanded. Anthony Murray, the man the police say, was the mastermind behind approximately US $850,000 worth of drugs seized in August 2022, was remanded when he appeared in the St. Catherine Parish Court on Friday. He is charged with possession of, dealing in, taking steps to export, and the traffic in ganja and the cocaine. During his appearance in court, it was revealed that Murray has several drug-related convictions. Parish Judge Jacqueline Wilcott ruled that Murray's antecedents should be verified before the question of bail can be addressed. He was then ordered remanded until June 23, when the matter will again be mentioned. It is reported that the Narcotics Police and the members of the Public Safety and the Traffic Enforcement Branch were conducting an operation along the Portmore Tool Road in St. Catherine on August 18, 2022, when a Toyota Heise motor truck driven by Nicholas Rogers was stopped and searched. It is alleged that 564 pounds of ganja and 5 pounds of cocaine were found. Rogers was subsequently arrested and charged with a conspiracy to transport dangerous drugs. He was granted bail in the sum of $1 million during his court appearance last year. Murray was later arrested and charged in connection with the seizure. St. Catherine man hit with gun-related charges A St. Catherine man who was shot and injured during an armed confrontation with a licensed firearm holder has been charged by the Portmore Police. He is Herbert Johnson, 37, of Portmore, St. Catherine. Johnson is charged with shooting with intent, being in possession of a prohibited weapon, unauthorized the possession of ammunition, and using a firearm to commit a felony. It is reported that about 5.15 a.m. on April 15, Johnson and an accomplice jumped a fence at a business establishment. They were allegedly challenged by a licensed firearm holder, and Johnson was hit during the incident. The other man escaped in a waiting motor car while Johnson was held by the businessman. Johnson was later handed over to the police and was admitted to hospital for treatment. He was discharged on April 24 and was charged two days later. Rock River residents protest after child almost swept away in heavy rains. Fed up residents of Rock River on Friday morning took to the streets to call attention to the poor condition of a section of the road in the community after a child was almost swept away by floodwaters during heavy rains on Thursday. The placard bearing group says the source of their discontent is a section of the road that connects Rock River to Chapleton, a major town. The road collapsed during the rainy season last October. According to the protesters, the heavy downpour almost claimed one of their most vulnerable residents. Yesterday, my daughter was coming from school when the water almost washed her off the road. So we want to know what's going on. She was coming from school yesterday and how the water came down hard. It almost washed her over the breakaway. Because when the rain falls, all the water settles in the walkway that all of us use. We can't wait until May when the heavy rains come or we won't have anywhere to walk. We want a road, a resident named Nadine said angrily. I have my business and can't get any sale. I have to walk with the liquor on my head for it to be sold. The journey from there to Rock River is now taking twice as long as it used to, and that's not right. Persons going to Chapleton have to pay increase to fares. Increases as high as $1,000 to charter a taxi from Chapleton. And if anybody is sick in the night, that's a problem, Nadine argued. Julian Russell, another resident, said that the temporary solution is useless and demanded that the thoroughfare be remedied immediately. 
We are at risk of being washed away into the gully whenever it rains heavily, and we need justice, he argued. Marlene Gordon, a resident of Sutton's, a nearby community, expressed that, that they have been severely impacted. We cannot go to our house. The people who live on that side who drive have to leave their cars here and go over, she highlighted. The residents also took issue with their member of parliament, Robert Morgan, who they say has abandoned them in their time of need. However, on his defense, Morgan said there are several challenges with that section of the roadway. The breakaway happened in October last year, and one of the challenges is that it keeps moving. After the NWA did the first assessment, the retaining wall was still here, and then a couple of weeks later, the retaining wall fell, and then the road fell, so it's taken some time. But I've spoken to the Prime Minister, the NWA, as well as a minister with responsibility for works, Everall Warmington, and we are trying to fast track this project, he said. The concerns that the resident had was the risk to children, and the alternate route is very far for them to walk. There is a little track in the community that we can do some repairs to that they can use. Additionally, we have gotten approval to do some repairs on the main alternate route, which is Ennis Hill, and we have been trying to fix it since I've been MP, but the tender process has been completed and a contract has been awarded, he explained. He further noted that the breakaway requires a detailed engineering solution. This not only affects the residents, but sugarcane producers are feeling the cost to use the alternate route. Ennis Hill Road is expected to be repaired within four to six weeks, and the collapsed roadway between Chapelton and Rock River is expected to take up to about five months. We know the residents were disgruntled, but have since expressed their satisfaction with the plans that have been outlined to them, and the things are back to normal, he said. Turks and Caicos pilot nabbed in connection with a Norman Manley International Airport drug bust remanded. The pilot from the Turks and Caicos Islands, who was arrested on Sunday following a drug bust at the Norman Manley International Airport, was remanded yesterday when he appeared in the St. Andrew Parish Court. 35-year-old Kenado Vandal Thomas is to return next Friday for a bail hearing. Mr. Thomas, who is represented by King's Counsel Peter Champagny, was arrested by the airport police after he was reported held in possession of 17 pounds of ganja. According to the police, Mr. Thomas was about to pilot a flight out of Jamaica to the Turks and the Caicos Islands when the ganja was found in his suitcase. Laws are coming to deal with 119 prank calls, says cops. The government is crafting legislation to treat with the issue of prank calls to the police's 119 emergency number. This, as the Jamaica Constabulary Force is reporting that approximately 85% of calls to 119 are prank calls. Senior Superintendent of Police, Emergency Communications Center, Gary Francis, told the news that the JCF receives an estimated 5,000 to 9,000 calls per day, the vast majority of which are not emergencies. We really want to appeal to our citizens to empower and educate their neighbors, friends and the children not to call the number in jest. We have a queuing system, so it is the first call that is sent that will be answered. Somewhere down that queue may be a very serious life-threatening call that we lose because we didn't get to it because of a number of calls coming in, SSB Francis said. He noted that the police would use a moral suasion, but they will soon be armed with legislation to deal with the long-standing issue. There is legislation that is on the way to treat with all of this, and there's also the technological advancement that will be able to identify those who are doing this. But before we even get to that place, we want to urge citizens to avoid using the line without a reasonable cause, SSB Francis said. He noted that the JCF sees an uptick in prank calls during the hours after schools are dismissed. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe and hit the notification bell. Select all for daily news updates.